السلام عليكم طلاب محاضرتنا اليوم على البوفر سوليوشنز هاي المحاضرة كان المفروض ناخذها احنا يوم الثلاثاء ثلاثة ثلاثة آه هذا هو عبارة عن شابتر كامل احنا راح احاول اختصره قدر الامكان موضوع البوفر سوليوشن موضوع جدا مهم راح تاخذوه بالمستقبل بهواي مكانات يعني تقريبا ما عندنا ليكويد فارماسيوتيكال بريبريشن ما بيها بوفر الهيومن بودي متروس بايولوجيكال بوفرز كلش هواي موجوده عندنا لذلك هو كلش مهم لازم تنتبهوا له اذا عندكم اسئله حاولوا تسالون بالموقع مالت الكلاس مالتكم لان المحاضره السابقه صحيح مشتركين 100 وشويه لكنه ما حد سال ولا سؤال عليها اتمنى تسالون حتى احاول اقدر اجاوبكم حتى توصل المعلومات بصوره كافيه لكم فهذا هو المحاضره مالتنا وراح نبدا بهذا اليوم راح احاول اقسمها جزئين بالنسبة للأوديو بارت على مود يصير أسهل في عملية التنزيل من الإنترنت. The outline of our lecture would be introduction. We're going to talk a little bit about the importance of biological buffer. What are the biological buffer? And then we will move to buffer equation, and we will discuss some drugs as buffer. One of the chemical application of buffer that is the use of pH indicators. We also will talk about that, and finally we'll talk about buffer capacity and buffer and biological system. So first, the introduction. So what are the buffers? Buffers are mixture of compounds that have the ability to resist the change in the pH by the addition of small quantities of acids or bases. What's the meaning of that? For example, if we take just a water, uh, water system, that's the pH, as we said previously, it's neutral, the pH would be equal to 7. If we add small drop of HCl, what will happen? The pH will drop from 7 into 1 or 2 or a 3. This is a great drop in the pH. If we add an AOH to water, what will happen? The pH will go up. It's going to be 11 or 12 or even 13. But if we have a buffer system and we add acids, few drops or few drop of base, the change in the pH would be very small change. And the resistance to this change in the pH is known by buffer action. We have two major types of buffer. The first buffer consisting from weak acids and its conjugate base. That's meaning the salt of that weak acid. For example, acetic acid, this is the weak acid. The conjugate base of acetic acid, what is it? It's the acetate. What is the salt of that acetate? Sodium acetate. So if we have a mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate, this is called a buffer system. And the other type of the buffer is the reverse one. So that means we have a weak base with a conjugated acid or the salt of that weak base. For example, now if we take 1 ml of 0.1 normal HCl and that's added to 100 ml of water, the pH of neutral water is equal to 7. When we add this amount, the pH converted into 3. How we calculated this pH? This is a type of homework. You and all of you need to know how when you, we add 0.1 normal HCl, 1 ml to 100 ml of water, the pH become 3. You need to know how to calculate that. Now, if the acid is added to 0.01 molar of solution containing equal quantity of acetic acid and sodium acetate, the change will only 0.09 unit in the pH. Why this has happened? Because when we have water, all the acids present or added by the HCl is converted into free ion, free acids ion, free hydronium ion. While in the case of a buffer system, the additional acids is going to react in with the conjugate base, that means the acetate, to convert it back to acetic acid. That's why it's liking consuming the additional acid. And this converted it back to the acetic acid, as you can see in this equation. The same happening when you have adding strong base like NaOH to solution of sodium acetate and acetic acid. What will happen? The excess OH going to react with the acetic acid part in order to convert it into acetate ion part. And so the changing in the pH will remain very small amount. 
Now let's study the buffer equation. To understand the buffer equation, we will take the same previous example, the buffer system consisting of from sodium acetate and acetic acids. The first step to know the equation, we need to know the dissociation of these two compounds. So the first one, the acetic acid, is partially dissociated into hydronium ion plus the acetate ion while the sodium acetate will be completely ionized into sodium ion and acetate ion. So what we have here, we have acetate ion as ion in common for the both of the equations. And we know the equation to calculate the Ka is equal to hydronium ion concentration multiplied acetate ion concentration divided by the original acid concentration. From this we can rearrange it to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration equal to Ka multiplied by the acid concentration divided by the acetate ion concentration and just make a note to that the acetate ion concentration is mainly coming from two parts from the acid and the salt but as the dissociation of the acid is very small we can neglect the amount of acetate coming from the acids and the AC minus here would be represent mainly the concentration of the salt by taking the minus log for both part of the equation in order to convert the H into the pH. So we will get in with this equation, pH equal to pKa plus logarithm, the concentration of the salt, the sodium acetate salt, divided by the concentration of the acid. That's mean the acetic acid concentration. In the same manner, we can derivatize the equation for buffer system con consisting from weak base with its salt so the pH equal to pKa plus logarithm, the concentration of the base divided by the concentration of the salts. So it is a type of homework to all of you in order to know how this equation can be calculated. And here you have a hint how to start with the solving of the equation. Example to the calculation of buffer system is the following. What is the molar ratio? That means salt divided by acid required to prepare acetate buffer at pH 5, knowing the pKa of acetic acid 4.76. So we have first pH equal 5, so 5 equal 4.76 the pKa plus logarithm salt divided by acids. And then we solving this equation, we will have finally the salt divided by acid equal to 1.74. So this is the molar ratio. What's the meaning of this number? This number means for each 1.74 from the salt, we need to mix with one more of the acids in order to have a buffer system of acetate and with the pH equal to 5. And this is called the molar ratio. Sometimes in the question is going to ask about mole percent, sometimes about the mole fraction. Each one of them you need to know how to calculate that. Now, most of the buffers in the pharmaceutical system are acidic type buffer, not the basic type one. Why you think that? So you need to think a little bit why most of the buffers used in pharmaceutical preparation consisting from acid buffers, not a basic buffer. There are two main reasons for that. The first one, when you try to derivatize the equation for the basis buffer, you will need to use the equation of the pH from the pKW. And the pKW greatly affected by the temperature. So there is a dependence of the pH of the weak basis buffers on the pKW that is often affected by temperature changes. The other reason that most of these buffers are affected by the volatility and instability of the bases themselves. So the volatility and instability of the bases make them not very stable buffer system. So maybe when you prepare it, they are good, but after a while, maybe one month, two months, they start to lose their stability. So then will not be serving you as a good formulation. Some factor affecting the pH of buffer equation. For example, first factor, if you add a neutral salt, what's going to happen to the pH of a buffer system? If you remember from the, your higher studies, uh, when you add an ACL, it's not going to change the uh, pH of a buffer system because you're adding a neutral substance. But when you add an A2SO4, so it is still a neutral, but it's you can have a significant change 
and the pH. Why it's, that is happening? Due to what? If you study the last lecture from the ionic equilibria, we know the neutral compounds also have their effect in the dissociation by affecting the ionic strength. Now, if we have dilution, what we mean by dilution? Addition of water. So what is the addition of water? Is the addition of water going to change the buffer system or not? Water is a neutral substance, but the addition of water also can change the pH by changing the ionic strength, depending on what is called the dilution value. We have sometimes positive dilution, increasing the pH, and sometimes negative dilution, decreasing the pH. So the addition of water in moderate amounts, although not changing the pH, may cause a small positive or negative because it alter activity coefficient. And because water itself can act as a weak acid or base, it's okay. The third factor is temperature. Can the temperature affect buffer? As we said previously, from and uh, we said we don't use basic buffer in pharmaceutical preparation. Why? Because it is greatly affected by temperature. Even though the acid, the acidic buffer also affected by temperature, and the tem effect on the temperature mainly depending on the dissociation. Uh, for example, in the acetate buffer the pH can increase with temperature, while the borate buffer, the temperature can decrease with, and uh, sorry, the pH can decrease with temperature. Drugs as buffers. Now, we will have two examples about the drugs having effect as a buffer system. Most of our drugs are weak acids or weak bases. Uh, that's why it's very important to consider the buffer system. For example, if we take salicylic acid, Salicylic acid, if we put it in solution and store it in a glass bottle, the glass containing sodium ions, there is a chance for leaking some of the sodium from the glass to the solution and forming sodium salicylate. And in this case, what we will have? Salicylic acid as a weak acid, sodium salicylate as a weak, as the salt of that weak acid, like mean the salicylate ion, the conjugate base. And this is represent a buffer resulting in increasing the pH of the solution. The reverse example when we have the ephedrine base. So ephedrine is a drug that is in the form of a base. When you add a little bit of HCl, it's converting into ephedrine hydrochloride. So we will have ephedrine as a base. Ephedrine hydrochloride is the salt, so we will have another buffer system. These buffers are weak buffer. They can only changing or resist the change in the pH about one definite. To counteract the pH changes brought about by CO2 of the air or the sodium coming from the glass bottles as, and this resulting in changing your system. That's why in order to avoid these changes, you need to add your own buffer to solution of salicylic acid to solution of ephedrine in order to resist any changing. It's salicylic acid just taking sodium, converting into sodium salicylate. You need to prevent that process by adding your own buffer system to the solution of salicylate. pH indicators. One of the chemical applications of the buffer systems is the pH indicator. So the pH indicator that you are very familiar with during your titration lab in the organic chemistry and the analytical chemistry, you will have a lot of uh, using for in, during the titration process. You need to add a few drops of the some compounds that's called pH indicators. So what are these pH indicators? The pH indicators are generally buffer system. So they are either weak acids or weak bases with their relative salts that's having changing in their color by changing the pH. For example, if we take the methyl red, the methyl red is one of the highly used indicator. When it's alkaline, giving the yellow color, this is especially at pH equal to six. When it's acids, it's giving red color, and this is occur at pH four. How this going to happen? First, we need to understand the dissociation of this acid indicator. So as acid, the methyl red going to react with the base, any base, even if it was water, in order to convert it into the uh, in conjugated base. The color of the acid part, it would be red. The color of the basic part would be yellow. And instead of a Ka, we can use the same equation for the Ka. And we have K of the indicator and that is equal to concentration of hydrogen ion multiplied the concentration of the ionized parts 
that is the yellow part divided by the concentration of an ionized part that is mean the acid parts or the red part how the system is acting is acting by the following mainly it's depending on the Lee Chatelier principle imagine now we have this is equation for the dissociation and you add an acidic compound what will happen to the equilibria of this equation when you have additional acid that means additional H3O plus so according to Lee Chatelier the reaction should be converted to the backward direction in order to consume the additional acid and it's in this case converted into the acid part of the indicator that have a red color on the otherwise if we adding an OH basic substances what will happen so the basic substance is going to react with the H3O plus and consuming this as a 2 from the equation resulting in moving the equation into forward direction leading to formation of the ionized part of the indicator and this one have a yellow color the advantage of such buffer system are the following they are less expensive compared to other methods for pH calculation can be used for the aqueous or non aqueous solution and it should be used for the non color solution in order to understand the change in the color unfortunately they have some limitation because they are less accurate and less convenient because it's when it's become red what's the degree of the red is it red with the pH 4 or pH 3 or pH 2 so it does not give you an exact value so it's different from the using of a pH meter for example the pH meter give you the exactly how much the pH now the other one by itself they are acids or bases so if you're adding them to unbuffer system they're going to change the pH of that system significantly and this is most of the time is not required